morning, church. How's everybody? Hey, I want to speak to parents real quick at every location joining us online. If you have not yet, if you have a child in middle school, high school, and you have not yet signed them up for Movement Weekend, do that today. And here's why. Here's why I'm, I'm so passionate about this. Every significant decision I made in my journey with Christ happened in an environment like Movement Weekend like surrendering my life to ministry, like taking steps towards freedom in Christ. Like so many of, of really important moments happened when I was just away from everything for a few hours and just allowed God to speak into my life. And so I just wanna encourage you, it'll be the best investment you make all summer. It'll be better than the camps you spend them to to make them the professional athlete. The statistics say they may never come, sorry about that. Um, uh, the, the, all the things you're gonna invest in. And I can't think of any other way, it's at the end of July, I can't think of any other way to prep them for the school year than just to get them filled up with Jesus. Come on, somebody. And so get them registered today. And I know some of you are like, well, my kid don't, don't wanna go. And that matters what? How many of you, I had a drug problem when I was a kid. My parents drugged me to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Come on, somebody, and I'm better for it. I'm better because of it. And uh, you may have to drag them there, but I promise you, you won't be able to drag them away from there after the weekend they have. Our team's gonna do an incredible job, so make sure you get them signed up. Well, I wanna say good, good morning to all of our locations, everybody joining us online. Come on, church, let's welcome our whole family all over Virginia, all around the world online. And uh, let, let's pray real quick. Father, we love you. And we're just thankful to be in your presence today, thankful to be in the house of God. What, a, what an incredible joy it is to, to come together to worship you, to magnify your name, to, to even in these moments, to feel burdens lifted and to get perspective just in your presence. We thank you for that, to get our eyes fixed on you and all, all the junk that we're dealing with. And so I pray now you'd speak to our hearts, open to every mind, every heart to hear from you today. And I pray that I'd be able to deliver it in the way you delivered it to me. We love you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said a big amen. 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 So when I was in elementary school, I lived in Effingham, South Carolina. Nobody knows where that is. It's near Florence. But Effingham, it isn't a dot on the map. It's a speck on the map. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's it ain't even big enough to be a dot. Um, I don't even know if you see it on a map. You know how like Apple Maps, you zoom in and it eventually begin to show you? I don't know, you could zoom all the way in. I still don't think it would show you Effingham. Y'all with me? Like that's how small it was. But there, all around our house was woods. And this was way back in the day whenever um, you had TVs were in boxes on the floor. Come on, somebody. Anybody remember? Show of hands, you remember that? All the old people in the room. God bless you. I'm kidding. I'm with you. Um, and so you had box on the floor and uh, you had UHF and VHF. Come on, somebody. How many of you, you were the remote? You didn't have no remotes. I was my dad's remote right here. This was the remote. You're looking at it. And uh, get up there, son, and turn the TV. And so, uh, but we had woods all around our house. And in the woods, I played in the woods all the time because there wasn't, there wasn't phones, there weren't tablets, none of that existed yet. And so you had to play outside. Like you had to, you had to figure out what you're going to do. And so I'd get home from school and I was out in the woods playing and there was a creek. And so I would, you know, I'd just come in on mud all over me and um, but I remember one time I was out in the woods and I was with my two older sisters because I'm the baby boy of the family and I'm the favorite of my mom. And, uh, and come on, all the sisters know the baby boy is the favorite. And so um, I, we were out in the woods and the creek had dried up and the creek was kind of my GPS to know how to get back to the house. So we were lost out in the woods and we didn't know what path to take to get back. And, and how many of you know whenever you're afraid, you hear things that aren't real? And you think things that aren't there, right? And so I was, I was afraid. I was, I was a little elementary kid. And my two older sisters, they started messing with me. I guess they knew how to get back, but they started messing with me. And every little noise, they'd be like, I'd be like, what is that? They'd be like, it's a coyote. And they eat boys. <laughs> we were in South Carolina, y'all. There ain't no coyotes that I know of. And, and so, but I was like, I was crying. I was in tears. All I wanted was my mom. <laughs> I mean, you know, all you want's your mom whenever you're afraid. And so I was crying for my mom, and I was thinking a coyote was going to come eat me. It was probably just an owl hooting or something, but I thought it was a coyote howling, coming to get me. And the problem was is this, is that I didn't know the right path to take 
to get to the destination I wanted to go. And I started thinking about this as it relates to this series. We're doing this collection of talks called The Good Life. It's just these two weeks, today and next Sunday. And then in May, I'm going to start a series called Health Center. You don't want to miss a moment of that. Um, I've got a great friend coming in to preach, Chad Veach. He's going to bring a great word. My wife's going to preach. I'm going to preach. This is, May is going to be packed. You don't want to miss a Sunday of May. And your survey at at uh, Easter helped me create this series, and so I'm really excited to share with you what you said were the most stressors in life, and we're going to talk about how the Bible deals with that, and you're like, Pastor, what were the top five? Come in May. I'll let you know then. I'm not telling you right now. You got to show up to church, and so um, it's going to be a great series, um, but these two weeks, I, today I want to talk to you about the right path, because in developing good character and, and in, ver- in developing godliness, we, we could use that term, I think sometimes we go straight to the goal, but we haven't figured out the right path. Like, like, like one of my thoughts in this series was, I'll just go to the fruits of the Spirit and say, let's talk about how to develop these, because you know that would develop good character, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Hello, somebody. How many of you know some of, we needed some self-control, the character of self-control in 2020? Are y'all with me? Can I get a better amen than that? Some of us needed self. We need to learn the delete button. That's the self-control button on your, pu- come on somebody. But I thought, what, what if you didn't know the path? What, what if, what if I, I tried my best effort and, and I'm just going to pull myself up by my bootstraps and I'm going to do my best to love people and I'm going to do my best to to have faithfulness in my life. I'm going to do my best to have self-control in my life. And I think some of you are frustrated in your Christian life because you, you don't know the right path. You want the destination. I don't think anybody wakes up and goes, I don't want a good life. Like, I don't think anybody wakes up and goes, you know, I want to be known as a person that has no character. I don't think anybody does that. I just think we get frustrated in our Christian life because we've taken the wrong path. We've been sold a gospel that is not the gospel. And that's what was happening in in this same book in in Galatians as we're reading chapter 5. In chapter 1, Paul addresses this. Now, let me give you just a little insight a little bit. The apostle Paul wrote this letter to this church, and that's what he's writing to, and that's what a lot of the New Testament things are. After Acts, all those like... Like the ones with names on them. Y'all are, y'all are with me? Like Galatia, Corin- Galatians, Corinthians, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, Peter. Those are written to a, by a person. Timothy, Paul wrote a letter to Timothy. That's the pastor of the church. But here he's writing these letters. And in this one, he's kind of correcting them a little bit. And, and I'm going to show you this in chapter 1 because I think this is the frustration of a lot of you in your faith journey is this. He said, I'm astonished. Like I'm blown away. You are so quickly diverted deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ. And watch this, you're turning to what? Everybody say it, a a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. So here's what Paul is telling us, is there are two gospels One of them is no gospel at all, and one of them is the gospel of Christ. And I think for some of you, what frustrates you, like maybe maybe you've made some decision for Christ, and then you're like, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to do best. I'm going to live for God. And then you get like, you feel like 10 steps forward, then you're like 20 steps backwards. And you're like, this is so frustrating. I think it's because some of us have bought into a gospel that is not the gospel. And this is what was happening here. Paul came through this town and he planted a church. And now he's writing back to him and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. The message I preached to you was Jesus crucified, buried, risen, and it's faith alone in Christ alone. And now what was happening here is that these, these Jews who had become believers... And the Jews were circumcised on the eighth day according to the law of the Old Testament. These Jews who had now come believers were coming back behind them to all these Gentiles, which unless you're born Jew, we're all Gentiles, were coming back behind them and going, hey, it's Jesus plus circumcision. How many of you know membership class only had females in it? 
come on, no guys were signing up for that class. Like growth track, step one, circumcision. I'm out. I'll be in the car, honey. <laughs> like, hey, believe in Jesus and then go see Dr. Luke. He's got a little procedure he's got to do on you. You know, like the, they were circumcised on the eighth day. These are like grown men. Like, no, thank you. I'm not joining your church. I'm not going to be a part of having that part of me. Anyways, and so... Here's, here's the core of what was happening, is they were trying to present to them that it's Jesus plus something for your side. Can I tell you something? It's Jesus plus nothing. It's Jesus plus nothing. And some of you, what you don't like about church is that you grew up in an environment that told you it's Jesus plus wear a certain style of hair. It's Jesus plus wear a certain outfit. It's Jesus plus cover up your tattoos. It's Jesus plus, don't listen to that band. It's Jesus plus, don't go to that. It's Jesus plus, don't go out with girls that smoke, drink, or chew. I grew up in Tennessee where the men are men, so are the women, so you had to kind of throw that in. Come on, somebody, that's funny. I don't care who you are. And so some of you, what's so frustrating about your faith journey is that you're trying to do Jesus plus all these other things in your own power and in your own strength. And, and, and here's what I want you to understand is that and it's a fundamental teaching of the Bible and it's a fundamental teaching for us as a church family. And I want to show it to you in, in the book of Genesis. And if you've been through our Freedom Small Groups, you'll you'll. You'll remember this, I hope, and if you haven't gone, everybody that calls LifePoint home, my desire for you is that at some point you go through our Freedom Small Group and our Freedom Conference. It's life-changing. It's a game-changer. But I, I want to show you how, from the very beginning, the enemy of your soul has been trying to get you to live your faith according to your best effort and instead of according to the grace of God. He's trying to get you to buy into religion and not into relationship and it is a massive difference, I'm telling you. It is a massive, massive, massive difference. I want to show it to you in Genesis. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Check this out in the book of Genesis chapter 2. It says this, now the Lord God had planted a garden. And if you've been around church or maybe even just seen paintings or something, you'll understand the, the whole Adam and Eve and the fruit and the garden and, and taking a bite of the eat. And, and he said, there he put a man and he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees to grow and they were pleasing to the eye and they were good for food. But in the middle of the garden, he planted two trees. It was the tree of life, number one. And then it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there wasn't one tree in the garden. Some people think, well, there was one tree and it was an apple tree and Eve ate of it and then Adam ate. We don't know what kind it was. I don't know if it was apples or what it was. But we know there was two trees, not one. It was the tree of life. And then there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and there was only one tree they were told not to eat of. Watch this. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat of any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So it wasn't like the tree of good and the tree of evil, and they ate of the evil, and so now they were sinful. It was the tree of life, and it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which once they bought into trying to appease God through good and evil deeds, it led them to sin. Because here's the deal. You can never get to God by your best effort. Never. And what will happen is that you will surely die. You may try for a little while. You may have a little bit of perseverance in it. But eventually, if it's all about what you can produce and what you can do, things will begin to die inside of you. And the Bible goes on to tell us in Genesis, it says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the animals. And, and here's how Satan always works, is he didn't come out and just be like, God didn't, you know, that's not what God meant. Here's what he meant. No, he just came out, did God really say? That's how the enemy will always tempt you, just know that. He has no new schemes, he's not creative at all. He'll just come out, did God really say you don't need to forgive them? Did God really, just a little seed of doubt. Did he really say you must not treat, eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we can't eat of that or we'll die. Like that's what he's told us. We can eat of anyone, but there's this one or you'll surely die. And the serpent said to the woman, 
For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open. So and I was like, hey, God's trying to keep something from you. And watch this, watch this, watch this. He plays on their desire to know God. So Satan can use your desire to know God, even a good desire, to lead you down the path that doesn't lead to life. Watch this. He said, your eyes will be open, and what? You'll be like God. So he played on their desire to be like God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. And it says the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. Up to this point, they were naked, and they had no shame. Because the enemy will always want to steal your innocence, and after he steals your innocence, he'll want to make you hide. They realized they were exposed, and they began to hide. They made coverings for themselves. And that is always the process, is it not? The enemy will tempt you, tempt you. This is going to be good for you. You're going to be like God. Then the moment that you sin, condemnation comes on. When condemnation comes on, what do you do? You want to hide and cover up, and then what? You want to run away from God. This is what some of you experienced today. You felt like a hypocrite during worship, so you stood like this with your hands in your pockets. I don't know why I'm even here singing the way that I behaved this week. And that is not God. It's the Father that says, I know you blew it this week. I know it was a rough one for you, but come and just behold me. Just get your eyes fixed on Jesus. Just lift your hands to heaven. Come on, let worship set you free in this moment. That's the Father drawing you to himself. And you got to determine which gospel are you believing? Which path are you walking? I'm going to give you a little bit of handlebars because I know walking through those verses can be a little bit like heady. So, so let me show you this. I'm going to compare and contrast, and hopefully this will illuminate a little better. One focuses on what you do. That's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's what that represents. But one focuses on what Jesus has done. See, some of you grew up in a religious environment or your perspective of God was Well, I'll come to God when I'm ready to do all the right things. Can I tell you something? You'll never get ready enough to do all the... You come to God because he gives you the power to do what it is that is right. Are you following me? I'm just trying to help you see. It's It's a massive difference. One is religion. One is relationship. One says... I'm just going to do better. Okay, I'm not going to cuss as much. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to cut how much I drink. I, you know, I'm, 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 going to, I'm going to just kind of wean myself off, not look at porn as much. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to be a better person. I really need to try to forgive them. I'm going to try all what you do, you do, you do, you do. And that, that's exhausting. And that's why some people, like, they, they, get, they get fired up. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to do the right. And then you don't see them for years. And they come, I need to come, blow my life up. I need to come back. Because it's exhausting to try your best effort. That's why you got to focus on what Jesus has already done. So my security in Christ isn't because I'm a pastor. My security in Christ isn't because Daniel reads his Bible and prays and worships. No, my security in Christ is because Jesus went to the cross for me, because Jesus rose from the grave three days later, because Jesus calls me his son, because Jesus calls me an heir, has nothing to do with what I've done. If we based it on what I did, I'm in trouble. It's based merely on what Jesus has already done. Which gospel are you believing? Which gospel are you believing? Is it what Jesus has already done, or is it your best effort? Is it your best effort? Look at what the Bible says. It says, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by possessing them, I I read 12 chapters, and I know they only read one. I'm a better Christian. Have you, have you noticed how much religion wants to compare their spirituality to your spirituality? He says, you're missing the point, basically. These are the scriptures that testify about me. It's not how many Bible reading plans you've completed. It's how much of Jesus you've seen in the Bible reading plan. Hello, are y'all following me? 
yet you refuse to come to me to have what? There it is again, to have life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. Our statement is so that people far from God can become fully alive. This is that life we're talking about. I'm not living out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what I can do, how much effort I can put into, if I can make God happy. No, I'm living from a place of God is already happy with me. God already loves me. God, I didn't even have to, I didn't even have to get up and do anything today. And God already said, you're my son. I love you. I'm happy with you. It's a massive difference in the path you take. You can try your best to have good character and live a good life. If you just do it by your own strength, I just try harder. No, or you can just go, no, I'm gonna focus on what Jesus has already done for me. Now, let me, let me give you another compare and contrast to kind of help, help you get this. Number one, one focuses on getting God's approval, but the other focuses on receiving God's love. So this, is, this is a problem. Write this down if you're a note taker. If not, write this down or type it in your phone. How you perceive God will determine your relationship with God. Let me say it again. How you perceive God will determine your relationship with God. And this is why some of you, God is like just this far off like thing that, that you're not really sure you wanna interact with a whole lot and, and you just kinda of wanna live life under the radar and hopefully God doesn't, because you got a perception of God that he's like this like, like really crotchety, like grumpy grandpa up in heaven that is just waiting to get you with a laser gun. Like he's got this super powered heavenly laser gun and the moment you mess up, he's just like, saw you, got you. He's just waiting to get you, just waiting, like, like you just know it. The moment that you go, you know, you take more than the Christian five on 95, you know, there, there's a Christian limit. You can take five miles an hour. God's so happy with that. But the more you go over that, you know, the moment you flip someone off, you're like, God's got you, you know, like the moment, the moment that you don't show up at church, you're just like, oh, and then it's another Sunday, you don't show up at church and you're like, I just know God's waiting to get me. And what does the enemy do? Well, you might as well not come at all. Because you got this idea that he's just like this grumpy grandpa with like a gun just waiting to get you. That's not the God I serve. The Bible tells me that the God I serve is full of joy, that he laughs, that he's like kind, that his mercies are new every morning. If you perceive God in that way, if you perceive that God gets up wanting to bless you, wanting to pour mercy on you, wanting to pour grace on you, how differently would you live your day? I'm not waking around going, and that's what some of you, you're just like, well, I hope God's happy with me like I went to church today. I hope God's happy with me. I'm on a dream team. I hope God's happy with me. I took a next step. I hope God, and I want you to get on a dream team. I want you to come to church. I want you to take a next step, but I want you to do it for the right reason. I hope God's happy with me today. No, no, no. God, God likes you. And he loves you. Like, do you hear me? Some of you need to hear that. God likes you. And God loves you. But pastor, you don't know what I've done. You don't know the, even the decisions I made this week. You don't know the fear I'm dealing with. And I know, I know, I know faith and fear. Like, I don't, you, don't, you, don't know the, you don't know who I slept with this week. You don't, I went back to that drug this week. I'm... Couldn't put that porn down again this week. But while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. While we were, not when we got our act together. While we were still doing it, he said, I'm gonna die for them. I'm going to give them a path that leads to life. So I'm not living from approval. I'm living from love. And I love because he, he went first. He said, me first. I'll go first. I'll love you first. I'll show you the way first. Look, can I give you one more? Then I'm going to give you some handlebars. Like, how do I live? Well, how do I do this? But I just want to make sure we're getting this because it's... it's it's two completely different paths. Are you following me? It's two completely different approaches to God. 
and one leads to life and one leads to death. One focuses on external duty, but one focuses on internal desire. One is a, I've got to. I've read the Bible and I've got to show up to church. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, even more so as you see the day approaching. I know what it says, I'm here. (laughs) Wow, okay. I know I need to be in community because I can't be healed. You know, confess your faults one to another. You may receive healing. I need healing, so I won't be in a small group. God's given all of us gifts, so I know I need to be on a dream team. I'm here, signing up for duty. (laughs) How do you think this would go over? If I was like, hey, Tammy, it's our anniversary, and uh, I've, I've got everything taken care of. Like, I got our favorite place in D.C. I've got the restaurant booked. Um, I've got a massage for you the next morning, and I've got, I've already taken care of the, all, you know, all 12,000 kids we have, and <laughs> they're solid, and everything's taken care of, all the, all the transportation's taken care of, sports, everybody's going to be picked up. You don't have to worry about, all you got to do is pack a bag and, uh, and take a, a really nice outfit uh, for dinner. We're going to a great place. I got it all taken care of. And she was like, thank you so much. And I was like, No problem, I've read the manual. (laughs) Read the husband manual. Right there says it's my duty on anniversaries to do something. So I've done it. I've checked the box. You're welcome. (laughs) How do you think that'd go over? The Floyd household. She'd probably take the massage and the dinner. I don't know that I'd be there. <laughs> Come on, son, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's how some of us approach our faith. I'm ushering today. I checked the, I've read the manual, God. Reporting for duty. I'm tithing today. I don't really want to. I've read, I've read the book. Turn your tithe to the storehouse, see if the windows of heaven won't be open and pour a blessing you won't be able to handle. I've read it. It's in the manual. Some it's external duty. And that's how your faith journey's been, and that's why it's no fun. Can I say it that way? It's no fun. Like, no wonder you're not having any fun. I wouldn't have fun with that either. I don't, a long time ago, I moved from got to to get to. I'm just telling you, it'll change, this changes everything. It's changed everything about your faith journey. I was a Christian, I grew up in a Christian home. I made a decision for Christ when I was young. But for years it was, what's my responsibility? What's my duty? I got to check the box. And there came a time where I realized, oh, the light bulb came on, which I'm praying happens for thousands of people. Like, light bulb comes on. I realized I don't got to. I get to. My position isn't because Christ is forcing me to. But I've realized his love for me and what he did in my life, and now I, I get to. Uh, look, at, look at this verse with me. This is love for God. Are you ready? You don't know how to love God? This is love for God, to obey his commands. Some of you are like, there it is, pastor, I knew it. Like, get back to obeying his commands. No, <laughs> listen to this. When you love God, look, his commands are not burdensome. It's no burden to serve him. It's no burden to go on an outreach project. No burden to, I don't, I'm not burdened to re, return my tithe and give my offering. It's no burden. He who has the son, this is why it's not burden, because I got life. But he who does not have the son does not have life. What would what, what Genesis say about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? It leads to death. He who does not have the son does not have you don't have life. 
So is it, the, what gospel are you believing? Got to or get to? Is it duty? I'm here, God. I know I'm supposed to be. You ever met Christians like that? Like, I'm just living for God. It's like, wow, that sounds enjoyable. <laughs> like, sounds like you're having a good time there. Living for God. I mean, like, the kind of the, like, add-on that you're not hearing there is like, I don't really want to, but you know, just living for God, just making the best of it. I've heard preachers say that, like, oh, I surrender to ministry. Like, did you not want to? Like, the Bible that said if you desire the office of an elder, like, you should desire it. Like, should be, you know what I mean? Like, I really wanted to do something with my life, but I surrendered to God. <laughs> Went into ministry. I really wanted to be successful, but I... Uh... <laughs> oh, it's, are y'all following me? Like, that's how some Christians live their life. No wonder no one wants to be a part of it. There's a branding problem in the body of Christ. Are you following me? We got all these brand representatives walking around like, ah, da, da, da. what if we had better brand representatives of Jesus himself that had joy in their life, put a smile on their face, love people, living from the tree of life, not the tree of the... Come on, if you're new to this church, like we believe you can enjoy your Christian life, that you can actually walk through with joy that the Holy Spirit gives you. He does want you to serve. I'm not saying he doesn't want you to serve people and be generous and come to church. Yes, God wants all that from you, but he doesn't want it because it's duty. I just wonder sometimes if we're like, God, I'm showing up because you told me to. If he's like, nah, I'll pass. <laughs> By the way, next week in week two of this, I'm going to talk to you. You need the right pathway, but you also got to have the right power. I'm going to talk to you about that next week, so don't miss it. It's kind of one message that has over two Sundays, all right? So let me give you three things real quick in the next few minutes we have. Three things, three handlebars. How do I live in the tree of life? All right, pastor, I see the difference in the two, and I think I've been over here in the knowledge of good and evil. How do I live in the tree of life? Let me give you three things real quick, all right? Write these down. Listen fast. Number one, fall in love with Jesus. I don't know how else to say it to you. Fall in love with Jesus. I don't, I, don't, I don't plan an anniversary thing or a date night or this because I'm checking a box. It never enters my mind because I'm in love. So I don't read my Bible and go, oh, I better read my Bible because God won't be happy with me. No, I read my Bible because I want to see Jesus because I'm in love with Jesus. Does that make sense? I don't, I don't come to church. I mean, I come, I come every week here because most every week because I preach and so I'm off. But before I was ever a pastor, I didn't go to church because like, I was checking some box because I wanted to be in the presence of Jesus because I'm in love with Jesus. If you get in love with Jesus, all the other stuff will take care of itself. Like you'll serve, you'll give, you'll get in community, you'll be on the mission of him if you'll first fall in love with Jesus. Are you with me? Look at what the Bible says. He said, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Some of you are like, there it is, pastor, like, obey what I command. No, no, put the comma in the proper place. If you love me, you will obey what I command. It's all about how you see it. If you read the Bible through the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, all you'll see are rules and regulations and what God wants. God keep trying to keep from me. That's all you see. If you read it from the tree of life, you'll see it different. What he's trying to say is, if you love me, all that'll take care of itself. You will obey what I command. If you love me, you'll tithe. Nobody will have to beat you up on that. If you love me, you'll, you'll get on Dream Team. Nobody have to, no one will have to twist your arm to be a part of serving the church and advancing the mission of Jesus. No one, if you love me, if you love me, you'll forgive those who hurt you. I'm not saying it'll be easy, but you'll do it because you love me. Do you see the difference? One is, if you love me, then go obey. And if you don't obey, you don't love me. The other is, fall in love with me. All that will take care of itself. Amen. Fall in love with me. I fell in love with my wife. No one, I don't have to get up every morning and go, don't have an affair. <laughs> I 
I don't have to get up every morning and go, all right, I've read the manual, and I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna have inappropriate conversations with other women. Why? Because I'm in love. It doesn't even, it doesn't even enter my mind. Because I'm in love. And if I love, of course I'm not gonna do that. Are y'all following me? If I'll just fall in love with, I know that sounds so simplistic, and it really is. If you just fall in love with Jesus, make it about Jesus. Can I tell you something? Don't fall in love with this church. I love my church, but I'm in love with Jesus more than I am this church. Are you following me? Don't fall in love with our children's ministry. It's amazing. What a gift. Don't fall in love with our student ministry. It's unbelievable. Don't fall in love with the songs we write. They're great. Download it. Spotify, Come Like the Wind. Just came out last week. <laughs> fall in love with Jesus. Let me give you two other thoughts real fast. Don't allow condemnation. What I talked about earlier when I, I said some of you even coming in on a Sunday like this, you're like, ah, I'd be a hypocrite if I tried to worship right now. That's condemnation. And the enemy uses condemnation to push you away from God. God uses conviction to draw you to him. Conviction is, conviction is God going, I'm sorry, I appreciate the clap. I'm just out of time. Conviction, I'm not trying to talk over you. I apologize. Conviction is God going, no, 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 come here, son. Let me cover you. Let me heal that. Let's deal with that. Condemnation is, you idiot, can you believe you did that again? That's not from God. The Bible says this, that there is therefore now no condemnation. I've read the Greek on this. It means zilch, zero, nada. For who? For people who are in Christ, who are in the tree of life. Because through Christ, Jesus, the law of the spirit of life, there it is again, has set you free from the law of sin and death. Number three, Make the choice every day. Make the choice every day. Every day I'm gonna choose life. Every day I'm, I'm gonna choose. He's not grumpy grandpa, just waiting to get me. Every day I'm gonna choose. He's a loving father. Every day his mercies are new every morning for me. Great is his faithfulness. Every morning I'm gonna receive his love. Every day, every day I'm gonna make the choice until it just becomes second nature. Every day, every day, every day I wanna see Jesus. Jesus, help me see you today in a way I never have. Help me to hear your voice in a way today I've never heard it before. I just wanna do, and then you know what happens? You begin to serve him out of love. That dream team, it isn't just something you do on the weekend, it becomes something that you do at the Starbucks drive through and because you become a minister of Jesus Christ because you're so in love. Generosity becomes just second nature. Of course I wanna give, of course I wanna serve, of course I wanna love, of course I wanna forgive, of course I wanna fulfill my potential, why? Because I'm so in love with a God who set me free and saved me and did for me what I could never do for myself. Here's what the Bible says in Deuteronomy, one last verse. This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses, and I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Now choose life. So here's the amazing thing about God. He's all-knowing, all-powerful. The big words are he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's sovereign, He's from beginning to end. He's everlasting to everlasting. Never has been a time where he wasn't, never be a time where he will not be. He's all those things that are massive and like, whoa, that's big. And he created humanity and he gave you a free will. Because without a free will, love isn't really love. It isn't love if someone comes to you and says, love me and do it now. I demand it. It's not what God did. He gave you a 
a will to choose. And so every day, he just says, I, I put before you life and death. You can't, you can't have life if there is no com- contrast of death, and you can't have death if there is no contrast of life. There's blessing and cursing. There's two different paths, two different gospels. You choose. And he goes, now choose, I really want you to choose life, but you choose. Choice is yours. Grumpy grandpa, loving father. Duty, I've read the manual, I've gotta do it. Or desire, oh, I love you, Jesus. Thank you, I get to serve you. Thank you, I get to worship you. Thank you, I get to be in a church family. Thank you, I get to give. Thank you, I get to advance your kingdom. Duty or desire? So how do you do it? Fall in love with Jesus? Fall in love with Jesus. Recognize condemnation, keep it far away from you, you choose it every single day. You'll find yourself living in the tree of life. Will you pray with me today? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Where have you been? What path have you been taking? Tree of life? Or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Where you been living? What tree have you been swinging from? (laughs) It makes all the difference in the world. For some of you today, you've realized that your journey to this point of faith has been all about what you've been trying to do to make God happy. And you've never received his grace, the free gift of grace. You've thought, surely there's gotta be something I have to do. No, not to receive grace, it's a free gift, paid for in full on the cross. And for some of you, you need to receive that today. You know in your heart that you're far from God, that if we were able to sit down over coffee and have a conversation, you'd be able to say, Pastor, I I know in my heart I'm far from God. I'm not living what you just described today. And I'm just telling you, you can. That today can be a brand new beginning. It can be a fresh start for you. If you say, that's me, I I need a fresh start today. I don't wanna live in the tree of the knowledge. I wanna live in the tree of life. I wanna fall in love with Jesus. I don't want it to be duty, I want it to be desire. I don't want it to be I got to, I want it to be I get to. I want it to be joy. And if that's you, we're gonna pray in just a moment as a church family, all of us out loud. No one's gonna come to you, we wouldn't embarrass you for the world. But right there between you and God, if you'd say, Pastor, that's me today, I, I need a fresh start. I need a new beginning. I'm gonna count to three, and if you would, just slip your hand up at every location. I just wanna know who we're praying with. You'd say, that's me. On three, you just shoot your hand up. One, two, three. You just shoot it up. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your honesty. You can put them down. Come on, church, let's pray this together out loud, every location, for the benefit of those that are taking this step right now. Let's, Let's join along with them. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I believe you died for me. I believe God raised you from the dead. Today I make you my Lord and Savior. Thank you for a brand new beginning. In Jesus' name, everybody said a big amen. Hey, hope today's message was helpful for your life. I wanna tell you, you should subscribe. The reason why, you can get content pushed to you all the time. You don't have to wonder if you ever missed anything. And also, I want you to think about giving. By giving, you can help us take this message to so many other people that are in need of some hope, need of some encouragement, and you can be a part of making a difference in the life of so many people. Look forward to seeing you right back here next time.